There's been mud on my soul There's been anger inside me There's still unforgiven deeds That now it's time to free I've been trapped inside so long Don't remember how to live How much of life has passed me by As I slept inside my dreams Oh yes, sip the waters too Let them wash all over you that the apostle of love Jesus says somewhere deny your mother and deny your father if you want to follow me it also looks absolutely absurd and unfathomable when we hear Buddha saying to his disciples forget your mother and forget your father then only you can come to me that to be the main apostle of peace love and compassion and he is using such language of killing of hating of denying your mother your father what exactly that mean A child is born and somewhere deep in the subconscious there is a sense of dependence, a deep attachment to the parents. And the attachment is at the subconscious level. Deep down, deeply inveterated. And as the child grows up and embarks on the spiritual path, And when he listens to spiritual versions of detachment, of non-attachment, of forgetting everyone and marching towards the highest goal, 
this attachment becomes the hindrance. It is not about attachment to any human being. It's not about attachment to any object or person or place. It is about attachment. Any attachment becomes the stumbling block. It pulls you It takes you into the world of imagination. And imagination as such has no place in the world of reality. And the path of spirituality is verily the path of truth. So when Buddha or Christ to say Forget your mother, forget your father. They are not talking about hating. They are not talking about denying. They are talking about getting rid of that deep, deep attachment. Because that attachment brings misery. That attachment creates a world of its own. That's why, if you see in the Indian scriptures, <coughs> they talk of God as mother and father. You alone are mother, you alone are father. We are your children. The universal fatherhood and the universal motherhood which has been <coughs> assigned to God <coughs> is seen much deeply in the Indian scriptures. The concept of God as father is there in many other scriptures, especially the three religions. Christianity, Judaism, mainly these two. Islam doesn't talk of God as mother or father. He is the master. So fatherhood of God is well known. What about motherhood of God? This idea is has taken its birth more so in India, that God is our mother. Mother is tenderness. Mother is all about love. Father is about care, protection. It's all about discipline. Mother is about love. Father is about logic, reasoning. Father is brain and mother is heart. And Indian scriptures mention him as both mother and father. Tomeva, Matasya, Pita, Tomeva. God alone is our mother and God alone is our father. It's not mere imagination, but they really feel it and feel it very deeply. All the religions of this world have got some selfishness at the center. All religions are oriented. in the
be within this deep emotion of selflessness, selfishness. And the relation with God alone is all about selflessness. That's why they have been calling out to God. Oh God, you are mother, you are father, you are my everything. You are wealth, you are intelligence, you are everything. You are my, you are my be all and end all. So this praise of God as mother and father has been going on since time immemorial. And when God actually comes on this planet, He shows this by His words, by His care, by His love. And everything that He does as mother and as father. It's not just imagination, but it is real. Had it been imagination, it would have been an illusion. Then you have to make efforts, attempts to come out of it. A person goes for an interview and the boss asks him, what you imagine that you are on the 12th floor and the room catches fire, what you will do? The boy, the man says, I will stop imagining. <laughs> so the conception of God as mother and father is not a fancy. It is so true and you can experience that on many have experienced that when he actually comes and shows how he is our mother how he is our father you know a child is playing in the playground his clothes are dirty There is a dust. And the father comes. And the child is infinite. If you look at the ends of Yagya. So all the time she was in the kitchen. Busy, clothes dirty most of the time because that time they used to burn woods and there would be dark flames. And she would come out to Baba's room and standing outside she would say something. And Baba would say, please come inside. And she would say, no Baba, I cannot come in because my clothes are dirty. Baba says, please come in still. So, the veritable love of God as father, as mother. And this love is so selfless, so immaculate. So when the God, the conception of God as mother and father, is there. It is there to be experienced. So God entered the body of Brahma and showed how God is mother and how God is father. Which is better? Mother or father? Mother. <laughs> But which is predominant. Baba has said of himself as Baba first. He is not talking of himself as mother. Why? 
inheritance. Yeah, inheritance. You don't get inheritance from mother. It's about inheritance. So he has brought this new concept of inheritance, which is never there before. Christianity talks about the kingdom of heaven, but it doesn't talk of inheritance. So this is an entirely novel concept. That you remember me and you get the inheritance. And which is the inheritance? The inheritance is not here. The inheritance is the kingdom of heaven. What about mother? How he is mother? Hmm? Sustenance. Even father gives sustenance. Divine sustenance. Celestial sustenance. Unworldly sustenance. This sustenance is not temporal. This sustenance is not terrestrial. It is otherworldly. It is so different, so unique. Inconceivable. So God is both mother and father. And what he does as mother and what he or she. We never talk of God as she, but we talk of him as he. Indians show God as mother. Shakti, Durga, Kali, Saraswati, Santoshi, Vaishnavi. Fierce form of Durga. If you look at that picture, it has a very deep meaning. Her eyes are full of love, but her feet is on somebody's dead body. That is death. So on one side is life, on another side is death. She is a loving mother. At the same time, she is wearing the garland of what? Heads. And she is holding a skull. She is terrible. She is love. And yet she is terrible. <clears throat> on one side she is birth, on the other side she is death. This is a strange depiction of God. The feminine energy. If you love her, she is mother. She is all love. But if you go against her, she will kill you. She is the very embodiment of death. Her tongue is out and blood is dripping from the blood-stained tongue. She looks so fierce, her, her hair are all scattered. She is walking and stamping the ground. Children fear to look at her. What is this? How can she be mother? And yet she is mother. And yet Indians praise her. And yet Indians worship her. Adore her. Fall at her feet. Plead. Implore her. Because this form of hers is a form of death. She is death and birth at the same time. She is love and hate at the same time. She is powerful. And she is beauty. She is dangerous. The peril incarnate. What about God? When He comes, He is also love, but at the same time, one day He will become Dharmaraj, the Lord of Judgment. That time, He will be unsparing, ruthless. Now is the ocean of mercy, mercy and ocean of compassion. A time will come when He will become impartial.
So this is a strange depiction of God. He is ocean of love. He is ocean of mercy. He is ocean of compassion. At the same time, he is fierce. Scary. So scary. At the same time, he is neutral. Absolutely neutral. He has no business with anyone. Totally detached. He comes, he teaches and goes back. He comes, he gives love and goes back. He comes, he gives sustenance. Yeah, he is that way. He is so detached. And that detachment is his beauty. In fact, detachment is his only beauty. Had he, if he is coming here and getting attached to souls, his beauty will diminish. But he remains beautiful all the time. It is an everlasting beauty. And the reason for that beauty is his profound detachment. He remains detached. But when he comes, he is just the ocean of love. He showers love like anything. When he speaks, it is as if the rain of love. When he speaks, it is as if the rain of his compassion upon the souls. He knows that all those who are sitting here, none of them has done the homework which I had given them last time. And yet he behaves as if he has forgotten. He knows. He knows and yet, and yet, and yet. He doesn't know. He behaves as if he doesn't know. But Baba has said and in Gita you will see that there is nothing that I do not know. I know everything. Everything I know. Everything I know and everything is in me. So God is a strange phenomenon. It's a mystery. He has got so many aspects. Baba says, remember me. With, sometimes I am mother, sometimes I am your father, sometimes you are guru, so you are preceptor, sometimes you are friend, sometimes you are beloved, sometimes the bridegroom. The brides are waiting and the bridegroom is coming. You all are my brides and I am the groom. Here comes the bridegroom. Sometimes he is the gardener, sometimes he is the blacksmith, sometimes he is the goldsmith. Sometimes he is the laundryman. He is everything. Whatever professions exist in this world, he is that. He is the supreme teacher. So when God is Mata and Pita, he teaches. When God is Mata and Pita, he gives birth, he gives sustenance, he teaches, he tells you, he cleans you. He is the boatman, the ferryman. He has come to ferry you across this ocean of life and death. So this is a beautiful relationship with God. And if you want to understand any person, you need to be around him. Then only you can understand him. You have to be in the vicinity of that person. How will I know about Prime Minister of India? By reading newspapers or reading books on him or what others say about him? No. If I want to really know who is the Prime Minister of India, what is he? I need to go and stay with him in his room. I need to sp spend time with him. What he does in his spare time. How he starts his day. What exercises he do. 
I have to spend time with him. I have to be with him. I have to be around him. Go and stay with him. So if you want to know God, you have to go and stay where he stays. If you want to know God, you have to be around him. If you want to be know God, you have to be as he is, neutral, detached, absolutely detached. He loves everyone and yet he is beyond everyone. And you want to know him, you have to deny everything which is below. Everything that is body, because he is bodiless. So drop these attachments. When you know your real mother and father, the real love starts. Sannyas is the death of the old you. Sannyas is an initiation, the new life, the new birth. God is the progenitor. So, One of the forms of meditation would be just to go and lie down on his lap and sleep without logic, reason, without any rhyme or rhythm, without any conversation or talk, without any thought, I am soul or I am that. He is sitting, I go and sleep on his lap. His caress, he cuddles you up. His loving caress, his beyond any cost, immeasurable. So Sometimes love him as mother and sometimes love him as father. He is loving mother and he is loving father. Get lost in his love. And the more you are lost in his love, the world is forgotten. The world of human beings is left behind. Om Shanti.